Welcome to Overserved. Ils sont méchants. Non, ils sont si gentils. Non, non, regarde-le, le petit hobbit chauffe I know I ask at the beginning of each episode for all of you to go subscribe to our YouTube channel, but to be honest, this is how I feel like you guys respond to that request. Go, 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 are you zooming in? Let's go, let's keep moving in. And watching, watching that bounce. As we begin to swing, how uh, is your follow through? What about your footwork? Are you doing enough with your feet? So be sure to click on that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our Cracked Rackets content moving forward. With that said, like Alex Zverev, let's jump into today's episode. Let's kick today's episode off with a new segment we are trying here at Overserved, our first edition of Who Wore It Better? We have three different contestants competing in today's Who Wore It Better, all for different purposes. Let's start with the man who flashed us back to 1988. He's rocking a checkerboard suit jacket, and I believe that's also a perm. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Brad Gilbert. Our second photo is of a skater boy who almost certainly is saying see a later boy in owner of maybe the last Razor scooter still in circulation. And yes, folks, his sweatpants wrap around the ankles. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Roger Federer. And last but not least, maybe the photo we can all relate to the most. A guy certainly still wearing the same sweats he's worn the past three days. He has moved into the video game phase of his self-quarantine. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Kei Shikori. You know, it's definitely a close call, folks. I am always one for the mullet, and to see Roger Federer on a Razor scooter, that's the content that just keeps on giving. But I think I'm going to have to declare the winner of today's contest to be... Me, as I've worn the same outfit in the past six YouTube videos for Cracked Rackets, and none of you seem to have noticed that. While we're all concerned with the safety and health of our communities and getting the world back to normal, it's become quite clear that these professional tennis players miss having their rackets in their hands day in, day out. And in fact, two players, Daria Kasakina and JC Aragoni, have found ways to use their rackets as part of their everyday quarantine routines. Westoff, show me some of the highlights of what they're doing. Not really sure how to feel about it. Something in the way you move Makes me feel like I can't live without you And it takes me all the way I want you to stay Stay By the way, I'm 100% sure JC Aragoni is pulling King's Hawaiian rolls out of the oven there. While JC and Daria clearly miss the court, one person who's keeping her skills sharp during this quarantine, celebrity Courtney Cox, showing off her tennis skills in this video. No, Courtney Cox is not a professional tennis player, but Westoff, roll the clip. We haven't done a breakdown in a while. The first thing that jumps out to me, Westoff, is after watching you hit forehands back to Parker last week, hers might be a little bit prettier than yours. The footwork's exceptional. The backswings are condensed. It does look like she grew up playing in the 80s when the continental grip on the forehand was the cool thing to do. But overall, I'm pretty impressed. I like the backhand a little bit better than I like the forehand. But again, overall, very solid performance from Courtney. So we know where Courtney Cox's shot would go, but the question for you is, where would you hit this ball? Now, if you think you're a tough guy, you definitely think you're going for number eight. But the truth is, if you're targeting number eight, you're actually hitting number 11. So that's a no-go. I'm more of a three guy. Always target the backhand wing if it's a righty. I guess it would be number one if the player's a lefty. Eight just is classless. What, you get a quick joke out of it? You get a quick laugh? I don't think that's worthwhile. 
Now, I've definitely skied some at number two, number four, number six. Those are all misses I've had in the past. But if I had to say, the spot to go to here is definitely number three. Just thinking about where I would hit a ball makes me miss playing tennis now. Thankfully for me, so many people continue to come up with creative ways to keep tennis as a part of their life during this quarantine period. We assembled a video of the most creative attempts tried this week. Westoff, roll the clip. Those were all impressive, but the best thing I saw this week came on the ping pong court as the gems life. Gael Monfils, Alina Svitolina competing head to head in a ping pong battle. Westoff, show us the highlights. This video just confirms my theory that every tennis player plays ping pong exactly the same way. That was the best clip I saw this week, but there were numerous other attempts from professional players that came up just a little bit short. We assembled them once again in our continuing segment. Westoff, rule this week's edition of Unforced Airs. Let's rock and roll. The last thing we want to do, as always, is end this episode on a high note, and there are so many tennis players across the globe, so many organizations that continue to join the fight against this coronavirus pandemic. We wanted to highlight some of their efforts now. A huge shout-out to guys like Novak Djokovic, Grigor Dimitrov, Juan Sebastian Cabal, Roger Federer, uh, events like the Atlanta Open, and so many more who continue to make contributions. Uh, It's not just the ATP, it's the WT. 
WTA as well. So shout out to all of them. Shout out, of course, to our friend Noah Rubin as well for teaming up with Voss Water, providing over a thousand bottles of water to the Northwell Health Long Island Jewish Medical Center's front line. Also wanted to give a shout out to our new partners at Cracked Rackets Tennis Treat Bags, a nonprofit organization helping mobilize high school tennis teams across the country to help put together treat bags for those affected by coronavirus. Of course, there are so many things so many of us can do even beyond donating money, donating blood, donating our resources, our time, just anything anyone can do and appreciate it. And we are so glad that the tennis community is coming together together. Whatever we can do to help, we hope that we can. And it's so encouraging to see so many in the tennis community do just that. So that's ending on a high note. But that's this week's roundup of all the comedy from the professional tennis world. If you have missed any of our previous episodes of Overserved, you have missed any of our Cracked Rackets content, be sure to go subscribe to our YouTube channel right now. You'll get to see things such as inside. I'm going to restart that one more time. You'll get to see things like CR Classics, our look at some of the best matches in tennis history. You'll get to hear our new Inside Out podcast, which takes a look at some of the lesser-known stories from tennis's history, explores them, and more. If you've missed any of our other content, be sure to go to our website, CrackedRackets.com. Shout out, as always, to the super producer, Daniel Westa, for the <laughs> of an editing job he does on these episodes. But for now, you've been watching the latest edition of Overserved. Overserved.